People have always been attracted by color. Some archaeologists trace the use of cosmetics back to 5000 BC, food colors to 1500 BC. Natural color additives such as paprika and saffron have been familiar throughout recorded history, but the compounds used have not all been so benign. In the early development of industrial economies, some manufacturers used toxic chemicals such as arsenic to make candy and pickles more attractive. Governmental regulation of food and medicine grew out of the Bureau of Chemistry created by President Lincoln within the Department of Agriculture. The original Food and Drug Act was passed by Congress in 1906 and signed into law by President Theodore Roosevelt. In 1927, Congress created a new enforcement agency within the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. This became the Food and Drug Administration. The Center for Food Safety and Applied Nutrition is the principal regulatory arm of the agency. Last year, it supervised over $270 billion in economic activity. This function is performed through seven divisions, one of which is the Office of Cosmetics and Colors, located in this building at 200 C Street, Washington, D.C. Close to 20 cents of every consumer dollar is spent on food and cosmetics. The work done here affects every American many times each day. Welcome to the world of color. These agents are sought after to color everything from soft drinks to medicine. The only additives allowed in FDA regulated products must either come from a carefully researched group of natural colors or meet the statutory provisions enforced by the color certification program. These colors are the result of well-established fabrication procedures, but as with any recipe, the same ingredients can produce different results depending upon how they're cooked. Color certification involves testing a representative sample of every distinct production batch. No two batches are really identical. To ensure that the results are within acceptable tolerances, chemical analysis is performed using techniques familiar to any major quality assurance facility in industry. The students that come to work here do these tests using modern equipment and the most up-to-date procedures. We are looking for majors in chemistry, biology, and biochemical engineering. The first semester will be spent familiarizing yourself with the analytical lab and learning basic wet chemistry methods necessary to perform color certification. Subsequent terms in the program will provide the opportunity to build on previous knowledge by taking on more advanced methods. Applicants who are accepted will become part of a team with primary responsibility for approval of the samples submitted in the certification process. In 1998, we certified over 14 million pounds of color. The cost of this work is covered by the fees required with the samples. This means, unlike most government operations, this work is not tied to budget cycles or appropriations problems. But this is definitely a government job, offering accrued sick leave and paid federal holidays. Students having completed one year of post-high school education are paid as a GS3, approximately $17,000. Because the workload determines what needs to be done, we have much greater flexibility than most places. If there's something going on you're interested in, you can probably arrange it. And there's plenty going on in the Washington area. It's just five minutes walk from this building to the grounds of the U.S. Capitol or the museums on the mall. Everyone is familiar with the technology on display at the Air and Space Museum. But what about the newly refurbished Freer Gallery? The exhibits under the Smithsonian Garden? The two sculpture gardens? the beautiful interior spaces of the National Gallery of Art, the Museum of Natural History. The museums located here represent some of the greatest cultural achievements of world civilization. Plus, the mall features many special events. In addition, Washington has the Kennedy Center, Arena Stage, and a vibrant local music scene.